The title slide fades in. The Computer Center for Visually Impaired People at Baruch College and CUNY present the Karen L. Gorgi Conference on Visual Impairment and Employment, Policy and Practice, Take Action. On the left is a picture with 10 advocates in CCVIP t-shirts at the Disability Pride Parade. At the bottom is the Baruch College CUNY logo on the left and the CCVIP logo on the right. Coming up, Visionary and Breaking Barriers Awards. Now it's very appropriate, if you ask me, that we had the commissioner up here, and now we are going to present the Matthew P. Sapolin Visionary Award. That's the commissioner Matthew P. Sapolin Visionary Award. And here coming to us to introduce the awardee for this year is Dawn Savino, who many of you know for many years, been in our field, and claims that she even had something to do with getting our winner into the field. So let's hear it for Dawn. Thank you very much, folks. It's great to be here today. Um, so some of you know me, and um, certainly I'm thrilled to be here today to present this award to a dear, dear friend of mine and someone who is well-deserving of the Visionary Award. Uh, her name will be familiar to everyone, and I'm going to reveal it right now, and that's uh, Janice O'Connor. Let's get a big hand right away. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I've known Janice since 1995, when she first came to work at Lighthouse, what was then called Westchester Lighthouse. We both worked there. I had been there a few years as the assistive technology specialist, and uh, Janice came on as the supported employment specialist. Some of you may know that supported employment is a particularly difficult or challenging, let's say, field to the extent that you're working with individuals with multiple disabilities. Prior to coming on board at Lighthouse, Janice had worked at YAI, which primarily serves individuals who have uh, developmental disabilities or intellectual disabilities. Uh, when coming on board at Lighthouse, she would now be working with folks with not only mental illness, developmental delays, uh, orthopedic impairments, but everyone had to be legally blind. So the big challenge for Janice was that she hadn't really worked with folks with blindness prior to that. So I was tasked with sort of giving Janice her baptism by fire, introduction to blindness. And as some of you may know, back then, 1995, I was an evil child. And I uh, told Janice some untruths about blindness. I, for one, I remember I told her that blind people could feel colors, that we could touch things and we would know what color they were. And she was so open and, and wonderful that she actually believed me. And um, it wasn't until years later that I told her that I was lying. And she said, well, but I've been telling people that you said this. And I said, well, it's not true. But of course, those of you who know Janice also know that she has her own mischievous side, and she got me back plenty of times over the past 23 years. And um, that's how I became well acquainted with what I call her witchy poo cackle, where she'll just take you out and laugh uh, hysterically. So anyway, um, so over those years, Janice and I worked really closely together um, on employment issues and assistive technology issues. Um, I'm very proud to say, and looking through my notes over the years, we presented at a conference in 1999, the Vision 99 conference, we presented a, a paper called Career Highways, and it explained the way that blind folks should and in fact must use the internet for job seeking activities. And just to be uh, give you a sense of where we were at that point, I looked at my notes, and in system specifications, it indicated that you must have a computer with 32 MB of RAM, four, <laughs> four gig of hard drive, and a high-speed 56K modem. Yeah. So um, this is going back 20 years, folks. But you know, indeed, it, it shows we were very much in the vanguard. 
And Janice remained in that vanguard over the years. I remember at one point I was working for another agency. Uh, by the time she had moved on to no longer working in uh, the lighthouse, but she was district office manager at Hempstead. And she gave me a call and said, you know, we have a client who's transitioning female to male, and we need somebody who can be, you know, open and, and, and uh, you know, willing to work with this client with no judgments. And I said, absolutely, please have him come on over and we'll work with him. Again, 10 years before the general public or even the federal government recognized uh, transgender people as a protected class. So once again, um, I guess the thing I want to say most about Janice is that she's always been as open and willing to listen and learn and be creative as anyone I've known in this field, which is certainly why she rose to the ranks that she did in the uh, state vocational rehab system. And uh, without further delay, I'm proud to present my good friend, the Visionary Award for 2018. Janice, welcome and thank you. Craig, come and read the plaque. Janice, I just want to read what's on the, the plaque that we've given you. Um, the Baruch College Computer Center for Visually Impaired People um, presents the Commissioner Matt P. Saplin Visionary Award to Janice O'Connor in recognition of her comprehensive services and commitment to full access for the blind and low vision community. Thank you, Thank so, you much. so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dawn, for that wonderful introduction. Thank you, Karen and Bill and the conference committee and, and to whoever put my name forward. I was so surprised when Karen called me and said that I was getting this award. Um, I'm especially honored that this is the Matthew Sapelin Award. I didn't know Matt well, but through Matt, when I was working at the Lighthouse, I actually found myself for the first time in my life at Yankee Stadium. And we were there to talk to them about access for people um, who had vision loss. And that rolled into a job save for one of their customer service specialists who was legally blind. And that rolled into internships for young people at Yankee Stadium who were just fabulous fans. CCVIP and this conference have always been very special because it's the only place I know where each year People from every corner of the New York metro area's blind and deafblind community come together to learn, to discuss, to question each other, and to leave with new ideas about emerging technology and strategies for employment. I came to this work during a midpoint in my working life, through the employment doors John mentioned. And I was going to talk about that color thing myself. <laughs> But then I, I talked to a friend who called me, and she said, what are you going to say? And I said, well, you know, I'm thinking about these kind of humorous things. And she said, you can't say that, and you can't say that, and you can't say that. So Dawn, thank you for saying it. <laughs> it's true. I still question it to this day. Is Could she really tell? And I don't know what secret you used that first time we went shopping at Saks and White Plains. <laughs> But she was telling me what colors the clothes were by putting her tongue on them. <laughs> oh, oh my God. Oh, disgusting. So, so bit by bit, over more than 20 years now, with by training and building experience with the support, the mentoring and the encouragement of the many people with whom I made connections, and through exploring, observing, and above all, from listening, I learned a few things, maybe a lot of things. What I know is that this work that each of us does isn't easy, that it can be complicated, it can be frustrating, it can be messy, and it can be, in nonprofit language, challenging, because we don't use words like hard and messy and so forth. <laughs> By working together, we overcome a few barriers pretty readily, some continue <laughs> to seem insurmountable, 
and new ones always present themselves. But with time and persistence and working together, the barriers topple one by one. We've seen a lot of huge changes, particularly in the area of technology, where downsizing, or downsizing is actually a good thing, where there is now built-in accessibility on many electronic devices. We've seen new approaches to employment with the adoption of programs that embed job seekers with a potential employer and provide training in both soft and hard skills at the employer's site. From my new perch, perch at Reader's Digest Partners for Sight, I've got to become aware of research and programs that are breaking down barriers in website design, in teaching technology in schools, and including low vision services at community health centers, to name just a few. Every day, we have opportunities to listen to one another and to identify and get past the barriers. We have the opportunity to do the work. And when we set ourselves to finding those solutions, a child who's the only blind child in their school goes to camp, meets another child for the first time, makes a friend for life, and learns about hospitality and food service jobs at a hotel lunch. A teen gets their first after school job and learns to give gallery talks at the Met. A young woman who stayed home for 10 years after becoming blind following surgery sets a new path for herself. She begins to volunteer, works that into a full-time paid job, and is able to buy her own apartment. A valuable employee with years of experience on the job begins to lose vision, learns how to feel comfortable discussing the problem with their employer, and gets technology training to keep working. Being visionary to me isn't about being the first or the most inventive. It's looking at what is right in front of us, envisioning what should be, figuring out how to make a change for the better, and having the will to make that change reality. Then there's only one le thing left to do, and that's take action. Thank you. Thank you, Janice. Oh, let's give her another hand because she's back a lot. I think we should begin to proceed, Dr. Craig Wolfson, <clears throat> to begin to um, hand out our uh, vision, our, I didn't say that right, our Breaking Barriers Awards. So let me present um, our colleague and great friend um, from the CCVIP Advisory Board and a longtime sponsor of this event. From Riziki, Riziki and Associates, please welcome Craig Wolfson. Thank you, everybody. It's an honor to be here once again. What a great event. And a special shout out to Janice. It's great to see you. And you really have been an inspiration over the years. So thank you for. It was so great that we could honor you. For the first award, I want to, I always read the comments afterwards, and it says the Breaking Barrier Awards take too long, so I'm going to try to be fast this year. Um, the first award is going to be presented by Yolanda Rillman for the Associated for the Visually Impaired, and the award is going to be received by Julie Kelly from the Aerial Design and Build Services. So, Yolanda, you want to come up here? Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, <laughs> let me write this down. Um, I, nominated, I nominated Ariel Design and Build for providing an opportunity to a visually impaired client. Ariel Design and Build is a boutique firm proudly operating on a referral basis, provides their customers with an excellence of quality construction service, project management, and workmanship. They are very selective when hiring, and this is, quote, from their website, our team of professionals in-house and outsource are carefully chosen in order to assure a high standard of service. Marco, an AVI Klein, interview with Ariel Design and Build for the construction project manager. The employer stated that they were interviewing several other candidates but were considering him. Over time, I reached out to them and kept in touch. Every time I received positive responses from the employer, 
but was told that they were waiting for a few projects to begin. After several months passed with no decision, I reach out again to touch base and offer the employer the work tryout, Employer Incentive Program, through the New York State Commission for the Blind. The employer's response, very positive again, and they agreed on hiring the client using the WTO program. The employer stated that Marco was a very good hire, he fit into the co company culture, and he was a hard worker. By utilizing the WT program, the employer was able to give Marco an opportunity in their company without fear of hiring somebody of uh, uh, the wrong person. She found out that Marco is an excellent fit for the company. Marco has been embraced as one of the team members in the company. He received his 90-day review from the employer. He was given an increase in pay and a bonus for doing such a great job. If it were not for the employer working with the WTO program, Marco would probably not have the opportunity to work in a field that he loves. Construction project manager is a job for which employers find it difficult sometimes to hire somebody legally blind. AVI values this forum to acknowledge employees that utilize our incentive programs and give our clients an opportunity. It is an honor to introduce Julie Kelly and Rupilia Seti, and I hope I didn't mispronounce, <laughs> uh, both principal of Ariel Design and Bill. And Julie came from Greece, and I know she's here on business, but I'm going to think she came here just for this luncheon. <laughs> Thank you. And I also, I also want to introduce Marco Valente. I'd like all three to come up, who I'm also very pleased that was here and made time from his busy schedule to be here, because they keep him very busy, which is a good thing. Hi. I just wanted to say that <clears throat> for me, life is about opportunity, and I think giving everyone an opportunity is very, very important. And even my own personal, uh, you know, life depends. I, I just believe in you know opportunity. So I think Rupila and I, <clears throat> when we interviewed Marco and we saw what a great guy and his resume was excellent and we never never did not consider it for any other reason you know we just like she said we were waiting on business and then we, you know we just felt that he was totally the right fit and like I say we 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 feel special that we can give somebody an opportunity that may not <clears throat> have it as easy somewhere else and <clears throat> I think everyone in, in life deserves at least one opportunity so that's we're happy. <laughs> Our next award will be presented by Anthony Severo from the Catholic Guild for the Blind, and we are honoring the Energy Economic Development Corporation, specifically James Hendon. Good afternoon, everybody. Okay. I uh, had the good fortune to meet the recipient of today's Breaking Barriers Award, James Hendon, who is the founder and CEO of Energy Economic Development approximately four years ago. Uh, and he was affiliated then with another organization that had performed a similar type of service that he'll talk to you about later on. The meeting occurred when both of us became members of a newly created committee launched by the Brooklyn Chamber of Commerce called the Veterans Business Affairs Council, because James is a veteran. I'm not, but they invited me on it anyhow, which shows you the, the awards of being able to network. <clears throat> At the conclusion of the first meeting, after we introduced ourselves, and I told James what I do, 
and I had spoken about the work experience training program and the need for clients who are visually impaired to have opportunities to prove their skills, restore their confidence, and hopefully on occasion segue directly to employment. And James replied he was quite interested in serving as such a conduit, but he wasn't ready. And the organization he was a critical part of then also wasn't ready, but he would get back to me when the time was right. Now, as all of you who do placement and set up internships know, the first inclination on hearing that would be, sure you will when pigs can fly. <laughs> but to my positive chagrin, James did get back to me after six months, and we set up a WET for one of my clients, which resulted in performing so well that he became gainfully employed in 2016. That was a client of Brenda Garbus, David Valerio. So when James branched out on his own and launched Energy Economic Development, it was mutually agreed to continue the success that originally began three years ago. So during this period, James has taken on multiple clients as wet interns to assist him in building his energy analysis and retrofitting business in the hope of providing a launching pad for them to gain valuable experience and assist them with connections he has to guide them to career opportunities that they might deem more suitable to their skills and interests. But there was always a hope that one of the wet interns would do so well and would enjoy promoting the business that Energy DC would have sufficient cash flow that a wet intern would become a permanent part-time employee. So I'm pleased to announce that time is now. My client, Casey Greer, who was referred to me by Cheryl Hunter, is an aspiring musical theater actress and who came to New York from Memphis, Tennessee. Makes sense. And uh, she attended work readiness training and has been a wet intern for NHEDC and has done such excellent work that soon she will become a permanent part-time employee in the near future. And Casey wanted to work part-time because it affords her the opportunity to go on auditions for musical theater roles and it meets the needs and fiscal capabilities of NHEDC at the present time. So I figure only Yenta the matchmaker could have done better. <laughs> Unfortunately, Casey's out of town but it's my privilege to introduce James Hendon, the founder and CEO of Energy EDC, to say a few words. Uh, thank you so much, Tony. Before I you know, uh, begin, I just wanted to give a few thank yous. First, to, to the host of this event, to CZVIP, uh, then to the New York Commission for the Blind, the reason all of us are here, and then uh, last but not least, to the Catholic Guild for the Blind to call people by name, you know, to Karen uh, Gorgi from CCVIP, to Cheryl Hunt, to the, co the counselor we worked with for the Commission for the Blind, and to Judith Katzen, and of course, my brother from another mother here, Tony Severo <laughs> from, uh, from Catholic Charities. Yeah. And uh, I also want to give you greetings on behalf of Casey Greer, who couldn't make it. She is the uh, person who's working for me now. Casey is at a wedding in Tennessee, literally right now, because it was an early wedding, she's getting ready to elbow some other bridesmaids to go catch a bouquet. So she sends her regards. I'm really not kidding. That's what's going down right now. Um, so, you know, three quick, three quick things. I just want to point out that I recognize this stuff is bigger than just us, as far as Energy EDC, or the Guild, or CCVIP, or even the Commission for the Blind. You know, everyone in this room cares about making a dynamic where a man or woman can rise by merit, and not by anything else. There's a quote from Irma Bombeck. It's, you know, at the end of my life, when my maker asks me, what did you do? I want to say, I used everything you gave me. All of us here trying to make a dynamic where every person is able to use everything they've been given and just put any other issues aside. So I just want to point that out. Um, another thing I wanted to say, second one was, you know, all this stuff comes down to relationships. You know, I mean, I got a good relationship with this guy. I met him at a meeting. He's a smooth talker. We just, we hit it off. It was love at first sight, good bromance. And I, you know, I, I, I wouldn't be here but for it. And I just wanted to point out just the value of um, being able to take advantage of, of this connection that we all have. So, you know, please feel free to approach me afterwards. I'm happy to talk to anyone about what I do, et cetera. But I just wanted to call that out. And then kind of piggybacking on relationships, you know, the fact that we need to help each other. I met Tony and I needed help in my business where I was at the time. I desperately needed help, but I thought I could do it all on my own. And it took me a, a bit of a reckoning to get to a place where I said, you know what, I need help. Let me reach out to these folks. That business wouldn't be alive, but for Tony getting us in touch with David Valerio and other wets who've worked to help, help keep them afloat. And then same thing when I set up my own shop to go to him and say, you know what, I don't wanna make that same mistake and wait, let me just go and get this help now. So just, we're here 
as far as the employers benefiting just as much as you all and benefit for those who get the work experience. I just want to point that out too. Um, yeah. And then I, I know time is short, but speaking of help, one way that, 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 and I don't, I'll be shameless with this, a way you can help not just me, but Casey is, you know, any referrals you guys have for us for folks who can use uh, an energy efficiency assessment. You know, right now, Casey started out making cold calls for me. She was calling small businesses, nonprofits. She did so well at that job as we elevated her. She now manages our commercial tenant program. What that means is the state of New York will pay our firm to perform an energy assessment of an office space as long as it's not in a government building. So if you, anybody is working in a space where it's office and it's not a government building, or you know someone who is, feel free to email Casey. Her address is Casey at energyedc.com. She's doing the work. I'm telling you right now, but she's doing the work. Email Casey at energyedc.com so we can connect these dots because I'm telling you, the money that comes from that, that's what she's eating through right now. So this is real. So this isn't no, I'm just, you know, being clean. We all helping each other, transparent. So once again, her number is 646. Six, this is her work number. This is her work number. I mean, hey, six. 646-664-1198. Her email address is Casey at energyedc.com. And any office space that's not in a government building, you know, we're happy to do it and keep advancing this. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, James. Well, it's fabulous. Fabulous. Our next award will be presented by Debbie Fitterer and Nancy Carrazzo from Helen Keller National Center. They'll be honoring Lisa Jackson from the Staybridge Suites Hotel. Thank you. Um, Helen Keller National Center is honored to present this year's Breaking Barriers Award to Staybridge Suites Hotel. When we approached Dr. Rajiv Mehta, whose family owns the hotel, about employing a deafblind individual, his goals were right in line with our agency's mission. We discussed the needs of the hotel and the ways in which our deafblind job seekers could meet those needs and contribute to the operations of the hotel in a positive way. Staybridge now has two deafblind employees one in the kitchen and one in laundry services, as well as a deafblind clerical intern in the reservations office. Ms. Lisa Jackson, Director of Housekeeping, manages a team of staff who embody the definition of hospitality. All of the staff at Staybridge could not have been more willing to welcome the new hires. They are eager to learn how to communicate with and support our consumers, as well as how to use and maintain the adaptive devices and equipment that our consumers use to work effectively as part of the team. So from all of us at Helen Keller National Center, thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Staybridge Suites Hotel. And we're very honored to present you with this award. Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Sorry, just have a few notes. I know I'm here to be honored on the part of Rajiv and the State Bridge staff, but I'm honored to be here, period. Seeing everyone in this room right here just coming together for a common goal is amazing, especially in the times that we live in right now. So thank you, thank you, thank you very much to the organizers, to the staff in the blue. You guys have done an amazing job. I felt welcome as soon as I came through the elevator door, so thank you. Like these two ladies just said, we work, I work in hospitality is what we do. We provide guests with the best possible service that we can provide, pretty much. Um, I work with Bela White. She is in our laundry service, and she does an amazing job. She is deaf and she is blind, but you wouldn't be able to know it if it wasn't on her button on her side. <laughs> the way she operates that laundry room, it's like that's her home, that's where she belongs. Nancy actually um, trained her. She was there with her for months, if I'm not mistaken. She's done a great job. She has really done a great job. Thank you, Nancy. Bela gets in at 10 every day. 
we know when she comes in, she rings her bell and she gets straight to work. She knows what she needs to do, how she needs to do it. She, needs, she knows how to get around. We also have guests who come into the laundry room and when they see Bela, they're first taken aback, but as they watch her, they see that she has everything under control. I love that she's with us. It's not a burden to us that she's with us. Just like she's learning from us, we have learned from her. And it's an honor to see what she can do. You know, she's in a world where it might seem like she's at a disadvantage, but she's really not. She's blessed. We are blessed to have her. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for having me here. Thank you for this award, for the acknowledgement. I'm just so happy that we're able to make a change, though we might seem it might seem that it's something small, but just standing here and seeing all of you, it makes a big difference. And I'm happy that we can do that because change is something that is great. And the better you can adapt to change, the more intelligent you are. I truly believe that. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for having me and thank you for this award. Our next award will be presented by Walter Dickinson from Helen Keller Services for the Blind. We'll be honoring Dr. Raymond Franzum from AHRC. Uh, before I begin with Helen Keller Services recipient for 2018 Breaking Barriers Award, I'd like to take a minute to thank some key people who continually help me provide services for the consumers that I assist in youth services. First, I'd like to broadly thank the New York State Commission for the Blind for the continued support of our youth and adult programs. Then more specifically, I'd like to single out a few people who are important to my work on a daily basis and making sure that students that I work with have the services they need and the support they deserve. I'd like to thank Ms. Iris Popkin and Richard Brown, Youth Transition Counselors from the Harlem office for their tireless efforts on behalf of their young consumers. I'd like to thank Ms. Barbara Campbell, Harlem Senior Vocational Rehabilitation Counselor for always being available to capably assist with any situation that arises. I would like to thank Mr. Sean Chinchance, Harlem DM, and Mr. Jason uh, Eckert, Downstate Coordinator for the support they have given programs that I've worked on. And I should also throw in a thank you for Mr. Paul Jurassi, uh, uh, counselor and children's consultant at the AD Maiden Lane office for doing such a great job with his kids so that by the time I get them uh, they already have some amazing skills. It's been a pleasure to work with all of you and I thank you for your support. If there was an award that I could give you today I definitely would. If I left anybody out please forgive me. The general consensus at last year's uh, conference was that I really do go on too long. <laughs> and now for the reason I'm here today uh, to recognize an exemplary community partner who has been pivotal in the placement of several of my summer youth interns, Dr. Raymond Franzum. Dr. Franzum has received his doctorate from Fordham University in Social Work as the Director of Internships for HRC New York City. HRC is a family-governed organization committed to finding ways for people with intellectual and other developmental disabilities to build full lives as defined by each person and supported by dedicated families, staff, and community partners. HRC employees embrace values of passion, respect, integrity, diversity, and excellence. In his role as Director of Internships, Dr. Raymond Franzum is the personification of these core ideals. I had the good fortune to attend his intern or orientation last year and I was amazed at the level of instruction he was delivering and the high level of accountability he was fostering in young attendees. Dr. Franzum brings old school values to the new generation and demands a high level of professionalism. He's exactly the type of inspirational role model that I would like to be for my own consumers. This past summer, Dr. Franzum developed key student placements at the HRC Fisher Day Center, the Melissa Riggio Higher Education Program, at the College of Staten Island, and the Francis of Paola Early Learning Center. Dr. Franzum is receiving a Breaking Barriers Award today for the thoughtful efforts in positioning our young consumers in demanding and rewarding internships throughout the HRC family service locations. Dr. Fransom, wherever you may be. Ah, oh, there he is. All right.
AHRC NYC uh, firmly believes that what's important is what a person can do, not what they cannot do. And throughout my life, I've had the opportunity to work with people who are visually hearing impaired, physical disability. When I had the opportunity to start the internship program at AHRC, it was natural that we form alliances with all people. Vision and hearing and physical ability are attributes. It's only an attribute among the many attributes that people have. When people have the opportunity to use their skill and pursue their interest, they amaze us. And I have been amazed when a person with, who is using a wheelchair ended up organizing and leading exercise groups. When someone who was blind ended up facilitating a drama group. Give people an opportunity to do what they can do, and they amaze you. Why, we never ask, <coughs> what can we do for you? That's a terrible question. The same thing that we ask for any employee or any intern, <coughs> what can you bring to us? And what they bring is truly amazing. Thank you. Our final award will be presented by Jaden Mitchell from the Lighthouse Guild. We'll be honoring New York University School of Professional Studies Division of Programs in Business. Good afternoon, everybody. I'll go ahead and start by saying that I share Walter's affliction and going on way too long, so I know that the clock is on us So, uh, as the last presenters of today, but I do want to give due deference to our honorees this afternoon. My name is Jaden Mitchell. I'm standing here with my colleague Ed Plumacher, and we are here representing quite a number of people from our organization, Lighthouse Guild, to thank an exceptional group of professionals from New York University. A large institution to be sure, but we are honoring three people from the Human Resources Division as well as the Division of Programs in Business. Those people here today are Nagar Farakish, who is the Academic Director of that division, uh, Kelly Collier-Brown, who is the Equal Opportunity Manager, and Darian Huntley, who is the Human Resources Manager. We are thanking them today not for hiring an individual with vision impairment, as is typically the expectation of the Breaking Barriers Award, but rather for making it possible for their employee to come back to full duty after experiencing vision loss. That employee, our client, is here today and we have permission to share her name and I'd like to because in many ways, as much as we're honoring her employer, we're also honoring her. She is one of our heroes, as all of our clients are. Athena Wilson had been an employee of this uh, division for a number of years <coughs> until sudden and profound vision loss occurred. And it's no mystery to anybody in this room that that is a life-changing experience and one that comes with a number of concerns and anxieties. And if you're midway through your career, the concern and anxiety that leaps to your mind most likely is what is my employer going to think? Am I going to be able to keep this job? How on earth am I going to be able to do that? In the case of Athena, she had to take some time away to begin the process of rehabilitation and adjusting. During that time, she took advantage of all the services that were available to her from the Commission for the Blind and through Lighthouse Guild. And if I may say, by took advantage of, I mean dove headfirst into, immersed herself in, worked her proverbial you-know-what off, <laughs> to the point that in basically, relatively speaking, record time, she was able to get back to her life and back to work. Athena's grit, determination, and perseverance are remarkable. But the other remarkable part of the story is the extent to which her employer stood ready to welcome her back. They reached out to us, not the other way around. NYU reached out to Lighthouse Guild to seek our guidance, our recommendations. They welcomed us into their fray, allowed us to come in and do a complete job analysis, test out the software, get into their personal systems, meet their coworkers. Basically, they made it easy. And once we got in there, we realized that 
This was not just a matter of bringing in an employee back. They wanted their employee back. They saw way beyond the vision impairment and recognized this. This is somebody that had proven long ago her skills, talents, and value, and vision impairment didn't matter. And that represents the spirit of breaking barriers. If I, if I don't know if that's that, nothing does. So this has been very much a team effort. I have my colleague Ed here next to me who has been very much a lifeline to Athena throughout all this. He is our assistive technology specialist, and he would like to share a couple of words as well. I'm gonna pass the mic over to him. It's right there. Is it right yes. Okay, right. Directly in front of you. Okay. And it's just right. Yep, got it, thank you. <clears throat> Yeah, I'd like to uh, just recognize Athena for a few moments. I mean, I worked very closely with her throughout this process. And um, working with Athena, I just have two things that come to mind, and that is commitment and courage. Athena worked very hard. She was always there. She was always diligent about showing up on time. She was always diligent about putting the work and getting things done. If you know Athena, she is determined. She does take action, and she's not afraid to conf confront issues that are within and even those that are beyond her control. She had a good working relationship with the Lighthouse, worked with many of my colleagues, developed a skill set in assistive technology to, to be able to go back to work. And, and uh, as of the end of today, I believe she has completed 11 months back on the job. Oh, yes. <laughs> Athena maintained a good working relationship with the New York State Commission for the Blind. Her counselor, Daniel Diaz, was always there for meetings, always there for advice, and had a, an unwavering commitment to making sure that she had the resources to succeed. I've been happy to work with Athena. Athena, I just want to let you know you inspire me. And um, <laughs> I'm just honored to have had the privilege to work with you. Thank you. Hopefully, hopefully it is clear now that this is an extraordinary team of people to work with. So if our guests from NYU could please come up and be recognized. Everybody, please join me in recognizing and thanking Kelly, Nagar, Darian, and the team from NYU. Athena, please come up. specifically thank uh, the New York State Commission for the Blind, CCVIP, and the Lighthouse Guild for this honor. Um, as many of you know, it does take the support of an entire community to make sure we are creating inclusive spaces, that we're maintaining a dedication and a commitment to uh, keeping talented individuals within our organization, no matter what challenges they may face throughout their lives. Um, it takes excellent administrators, HR professionals, and accommodations professionals to all work in partnership with um, subject matter experts, such as the fantastic team at the Lighthouse Guild. Um, Athena, you have truly broken barriers for NYU. Um, your success is a result of your skills, your talent, your dedication, um, your willingness, and your hard work um, really is an inspiration to us all every day. We continue to learn from you. Um, we are so proud uh, to have you as a val valued member of our NYU community. Um, we make a commitment to you, um, to all of our employees, to all of our prospective employees, <laughs> um, to continue learning from you, uh, to continue learning from the Lighthouse Guild and other valued agencies in this room, um, to expand our services and our inclusion efforts until we reach our goal of true universal access. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> what fabulous, fabulous awards and I failed to mention all day long that the other people who were critical, wait, 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 the other people who were critical in planning this event, represented by Debbie Fitterer, please let's give a shout out to the placement professionals in New York City, the placement consortium, everybody.
Now, we have two more things to do. The last thing we'll do will be to have Sergeant Judith Gerber start the vendors on their procession of announcing who they are and where they are, but this conference would not be the conference that it is without the volunteers who give so blank, excuse me, so much time to planning. And their coordinator is here to present the volunteer awards for 2018, Lisa Saunders. Thank you, and thank you for that warm round of applause for our wonderful volunteers. I'm presenting the Louise Tropp Volunteer Service Award to a volunteer who has worked at the conference for three years. My first certificate is to Aaron Lung. Service. My second is to Svetlana Dubova. Good job. <laughs> the next is to Jonathan Liu. My next is to someone who has helped me in the office and at the, as a volunteer, a sighted guide, and basically anything that was asked of these next two volunteers. The first goes to Dr. Lynn Luxton. Yay. My last award, ditto, anything before the conference, during the conference, after the conference. I could not have done it without, without my volunteers. Nancy O'Connell. Yes. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.